If you're looking for a quick start guide for your Tico Westinghouse E510 VFD, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Keith from E-Motors Direct, and today we're covering the most common parameter setups for the E510 VFD. Find the full manual linked in the video description for a complete list of parameters. The Tico E510 VFD series is considered a compact drive. The standout feature of the E510 is the ingress protection. These come in NEMA 4X enclosures, meaning they protect against dust, water, and corrosion. A NEMA 4X is equivalent to an IP65 or IP66. If you work in a facility that's washed down regularly, these are an ideal drive. The NEMA 4X enclosure will protect the internals of the VFD, allowing you to use this drive in food manufacturing and chemical processing applications with confidence. Because of their compact size, these VFDs are a great option when retrofitting or replacing an older generation VFD that may have been installed in a tight location. These are a direct replacement for the Tico Westinghouse N3 Legacy Series. The E510s are considered medium duty, meaning they're ideal for applications where there is not a ton of variation in the load. If you do have a lot of variation in your load, you'll want to opt for the heavy duty A510 or F510, depending on your application. If you have a steady, predictable load, the E510 is a great option. First, let's do a quick overview of the drive ports and terminals. If you're already familiar, jump to the next chapter of this video. Looking at the front terminals where you'll connect any external controls, R1 and R2 are relay outputs. These terminals are used to operate another component that operates with the motor, such as indicator lights or fans, or they provide signaling for the current state of the drive. The S1 to S5 terminals are for digital inputs. S1 to S5 are the terminals where you'll connect buttons, switches, and sensors. And then 10V to AGND are analog inputs and outputs. 10B is a DC volt DC power output for the connected device. This can only really be used with a potentiometer due to the 20 milliamp limit. AI1 and AI2 are multifunction analog inputs that can accept a current or voltage signal while AO is the analog output and AGND is the ground. These inputs allow for the drive speeds to be controlled by voltage or current signals from external instruments like a potentiometer or float sensor. L1, L2, and L3 are the connections to provide single or three-phase power to the VFD. In single-phase setups, L1 is the power input and L3 is the neutral. In three-phase setups, L1, L2, and L3 are each connected to a phase. T1, T2, and T3 are the output lines that go to the motor, and these are the ground terminals. We'll make these power input connections to start up our VFD and start configuring. Okay, let's dive into the actual drive setup. On the first power up, we have to do the keypad setup. Press the display slash function key until you see four digits separated by a dash, like this. Press enter and use the up or down arrow keys to find 00-00, basic function. The button says read slash enter on it. Press enter to shift the cursor position to the next digit. We'll look at how you want to control the motor. Press the up arrow once. You should see 00-02, long press enter. If you want to control your motor through the VFD keypad, you'll want a value of zero. If you want to control the motor with an external start stop switch, you'll use a value of one. Make your selection and long press enter. Next, we'll determine the frequency command source. Press the up arrow three times. You should see 00-05 and then long press enter. If you want to control the frequency through the keypad, keep the value at zero. If you want to use a VFD potentiometer, change the value to one. If you prefer to use an external potentiometer to adjust the frequency, change the value to two. I'm gonna keep mine at value at zero. Make your selection and long press enter. Now let's head back to the group list and start inputting our motor data into the VFD. You'll find all this info on your motor nameplate. In some cases, the nameplate won't have all the information you're looking for. That's fine. Just use whatever information you have. You should still see 00-05 on your screen. Navigate to 02-01 and long press enter. Here, we'll set the parameters for the motor current. Find the current rating on your motor nameplate, which might be indicated as amps, FLA, or current. Set the parameter and long press enter to save. The next parameter is motor rated speed under 02-03. Use the arrow to go to 02-03 and long press enter. Our motor is rated for 1800 RPM, so we'll set that and long press enter. Music 
Next is the motor rated voltage under 02-04. We'll hit the up arrow once and long press enter. Set that to 230 volts and then long press enter to save. We'll find the motor rated power under 02-05. Press the up arrow once and long press enter. This setting is rated at kilowatts. So set that to 0.75 then long press enter. And finally, motor frequency under 02-06. Press the up arrow once and long press enter. And we'll set that one to 60 Hertz and long press enter to save. Now the VFD is set up for this specific motor. Next, let's take a look at the maximum and minimum frequency output. Setting this parameter will help to ensure that the motor isn't operated outside of its rated speed range. 00-12 is for the maximum frequency and 00-13 is for the minimum frequency. Move the cursor to get to 00-12 and long press enter. We'll go ahead and set your max frequency. Long press enter. Press the up arrow once and long press enter again to set your minimum speed. Your minimum frequency might be zero, or if you want the motor to always be running at a low speed, your 00-13 parameter will be higher than zero. Long press enter. We can also play with the acceleration and deceleration times. This is the amount of time it'll take to reach a certain speed or the amount of time it takes to stop the motor. Acceleration is under 00-14. Press the up arrow once and then long press enter. The units for this parameter are in seconds. For the sake of this video, we're gonna speed this up to only two seconds and long press enter. And then we'll do the same for deceleration, which is under 00-15. Press the up arrow once, long press enter, and determine how many seconds you want it to take for the motor to stop. Make your selection and long press enter. Now we can run the motor, change speeds to go faster or slower, and then stop the motor, all from the VFD. Last but not least, let's talk about factory reset. Say you've decided to use your E510 variable frequency drive in a new application, or maybe you've just been playing with the settings so much that it's time to reset the whole thing. We'll hit display slash function and use the enter button and arrows until we get to 13-08 and long press enter. The number you want to enter here is based on the drive's frequency and voltage ratings and the power available to your building. You'll find the list of available options in the drive's instruction manual. We're gonna be setting ours to 60 Hertz and 208 volts. So we'll set this parameter to 1160 and then long press enter. Use the enter button to move the cursor position and the arrows to change the digit value. And there you have it. You've successfully set up your Tigo Wessinghouse E510 VFD and are now ready to control your motor. If you have anything to add, have any questions, or you have a suggestion for another topic for us to cover, leave us a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial motors in Canada. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.